Hi everyone and welcome to Asami Rat Care. Um, so today's video is going to be all about the wonderful books. In fact I'm going to do a series of videos um, whilst I'm still doing the kind of genetic stuff um, for the, those of you who are a bit more kind of pet focused which are going to be looking at um, books and does and the various different kind of attributes what makes them different from each other basically um, and the first thing I'm going to do is say that books or does make wonderful pets so I'm not going to say everybody should go out and get does or everybody should go out and get books I've got both and you know what they're both special in their own right and they do have little quirks and little differences um, that are, make them kind of different as pets um, but I would definitely not say one sex or the other is the better pet um, and that's based off quite a few years of owning both of them <laughs> Um, so don't expect this to come out of the videos. I'm also not going to say which is the best kind of kids pet or pet for you owners or such because in reality it varies so much depending on the individuals that there isn't a right answer on this. Instead I'm going to focus on the areas where there is actually differences. So the first one I'm going to do, and I have a very handy companion to help me do this, oh, and, and another companion. Right, so first thing I'm going to look at is around the physical side of things and I should say I filmed this once um, and I've just done everything in one go and it's a 40 minute long um, talk about books and I decided that nobody in the right mind wants oh, I say 40 minutes I mean an hour actually yes so nobody wants to watch that um, in one sitting so what I'm going to do is break it down into separate videos so you can take it a bit at a time so first thing I'm going to look at is the physical attributes so quite handily here I've got a spade doe who lives in my book group and one of the adult books that we've got here and the first thing to notice about them is there is quite a distinct size difference and it starts at the head so if you look close um, Sol here who is my model for an adult book has a very wide head I will say Sol has quite a short head anyway he's a bit of a short ass generally um, but he's kind of quite typically got a booky head whereas if you look at magpie here's head it's a lot narrower so this is quite normal in an adult book um, for them to have a wider head and that's because of um, it's much the same as if you look let's say at a cow versus a bull bulls typically have broader heads and it's all to do with testosterone and how it causes them to grow at different rates in fact you castrate a book young and they're probably going to end up looking fairly similar to a doe if they've not gone through that kind of like teenage period where everything fills out if you think of kind of male humans and how their shoulders get broad and everything it's exactly the same in fact you can see the broader shoulders again on Sol he's much wider it's not just that he's longer in fact being a bit short he's actually not that much longer than magpie and magpie is quite a short doe um wait a sec I'll see if I can get um, a better sized book so let's borrow magpie again eclipse is quite a long book as much as he's curled up at the moment but you can see the much increased um kind of size there from him um whereas in a young book um, which Kip here, he's still got an extra length on Magpie but he's a lot more similar in terms of shape he's starting to fill out but he's not fully filled out yet and to be fair he's a bit of a girly boy is, um, is Kip um, so the first thing you notice between books and does is books are much broader they generally when fully grown longer and in fact you'll notice that size difference starting quite young so whilst when my babies are kind of a few weeks old they're very similar in size by the time they're kind of around the six seven and then getting towards eight week mark the books are starting to kind of overtake the does up to that point the does can actually be bigger or the same size it's all very similar but there's, there's that kind of point when the books start kind of accelerating and at that rate they will grow faster and that actually means sometimes they need a little bit more food so you do need to watch it um, another young book here this is um, my little boy bobby and actually he's got a slightly broader head than kip he's a bit more manly but you're still fairly girly at this stage because you're only young and they're about five months each so they're they're not old boys by any means hey you mister yes you're a pretty boy yes so um books will start growing bigger and they will end up bigger as well but there is it's a range of sizes so like magpie is a small doe if i compared her to um some of my adult does she'd be quite near the bottom in fact magpie let's have a look what our last weight in she's kind of low 300s um and my um normal adult does are more around about the kind of high 300 range when they're when the adults up to kind of 450 ish um so there's quite a range in does but when you're looking at books that range is more pronounced so for an adult book i would suspect they probably end up in the region of about 400 450 grams through to 750 850 so there's a massive range of weights there but they're right weight and i will say that it does vary watch my weight video if you kind of want a bit of tips on how to judge it 
Um, it's not necessarily that all books are going to be broad. You can get books that are heavier than that, than they're right, that are the right weight for their kind of build. And you can get books that are smaller than that and still the right weight. Um, but it gives you an idea of the range. Whereas the does tend to be um, more around the 250 to 550 gram mark. Again, you can get some that are a bit bigger, but they are substantially smaller than um, books. Um, growth rate wise, what you tend to find with books is they tend to grow uh, their growing period seems to be longer so they will spend probably up to six to nine months growing into their length so um kip still has some length to grow into but he's actually now quite a nice ray, ray, le length sorry if you compare him to my um, shorter rat he's actually already starting to beat poor little soul but you're a nice big boy aren't you yes um, he might be short but he's muscly um but at this age he's still quite narrow and that is something that he's going to grow into over the next few months. He'll continue to grow a bit of length, and but gradually over the next few months, now he's getting up to the five, six months mark, he's going to also start filling out more too. Um, growth rates do vary on lines, so some books will be big, mu mu muscly, macho mans at six months. I've seen some books at like four or five months that have looked just as broad as salt and, and beefier, if anything. Um, my line grow quite slowly, I quite like that. <laughs> they stay kittens for longer. Um, but yes, so physically broader, much more muscular. So um, a muscly doe is not going to feel the same as a muscly book. A muscly book feels like a brick. They look a bit like a brick. They're kind of rectangular um, with a little pointy head at the front. Um, whereas even a really well muscled doe is not going to be that. They're going to be much slimmer. And that is down to the testosterone. Um, when the testosterone kicks in and on books, that's typically around about the kind of 12 weekish mark and i say some books get it earlier i've seen books as young as eight weeks have started to get that testosterone kick some get it later on some it hits harder and faster so they broaden out a lot faster um, and also diet plays a factor into that if you feed books a lot of protein when they're young they're going to get broader faster um, which is in theory quite good for showing but not great for the kind of longevity side of things um, so i prefer mine to grow kind of quite slowly any trouble um yes so that kind of um broadening out happens at that age they fill out continuously to get muscle and then generally they'll get to a certain point in their life when they're going to um the testosterone starts dropping off so um, eclipse here and sol they're about a year old they're very nearly a year old they're still probably getting towards the end of their growth now um i could see them have another growth spurt or two in their lives um, but they're quite kind of well filled out now and um, particularly eclipse he's a kind of big muscle bag aren't you mister um he's quite a broad rat good rat slightly kind of grumpy rat at times bless him he's still going slightly through his teenage phase but we'll get onto the behavioral aspect later on um, or another day um so yes he's getting towards the end of his thing so what will happen probably around about the 18 months mark he'll definitely be done growing and his testosterone will start dropping off and you actually can physically see that um, i wonder if he will um, cooperate with this because i'm asking quite a lot of him but what you can see on some books is something called book grease and it's quite hard to see on um clips i wonder if i can see it on one of the babies they're a bit young really yet it's probably a little bit you can see on there but if you notice the skin has a slight orangey tone to it which is fun to see on orange rat <laughs> But effectively, this is a form of, of um, kind of a greasy substance that protects the skin and the fur. And all books have it, hence why they call it book grease. You don't necessarily see it on all of them if they've not got very prominent book grease. Dif they produce different amounts of book grease. And it's a physical difference between does. Though I have seen the very odd doe that's quite a bucky doe. So I think she's actually, because girls get testosterone too. Um, I think they're quite high in testosterone and they get this kind of book grease. But generally it's pretty much um, only boys that get it. They get it to varying amounts and they'll get it most around their teenage period, which is around about the kind of like five to probably nine months-ish. Technically you should be a teenager by now, but you're still a baby. Yes, you are. You're still a baby. He's a good boy, he's kid. Um, yes, yeah, so they get this book grease um, and that's kind of part of a sign that the testosterone is kicking in. At the same time, um, their coat will start getting harsher as well and their smell will change um, and that really comes into um, importance when you're talking about the behavioural aspects um, later on as well. Um, 
they will smell different, they will have coarser coat, they'll be more manly. And that's when they start getting these kind of growth. Then when they get around to about the 18 months mark, that buck grease, um, that kind of coarser coat will start dropping off and you'll actually kind of see it in them. <laughs> what quite often happens, and I wonder if I can, this is chancy, there's girls in here and there's books out, but I want to borrow a burko. Got you, nope, nope, everybody in. Yes, I know you want to meet boys. Better do this fast because I don't think the rest will. Burko is quite an old gent. Um, Burko is a cinnamon rat, which means his, his whole body should be the colour of his head. But if you notice at the back here, it's very orange in places and it's still got a bit darker there and there. And that's because his guard hairs, which are the kind of long, coarse hairs on um, a buck's coat, have dropped out. Now he's castrated, so his testosterone is gone. <laughs> um, he's lowest testosterone rat in the um, group, probably. Um, and that includes all the girls. Right, door shut. Good girls. Um, but that kind of loss of guard hairs is common in old books and it's something that you'll physically notice. And it's really obvious in agouti based rats because they have like black ticking at the end of kind of an orange hair shaft or brownie hair shaft. And they lose that black ticking so suddenly they're orange on the sides and they look almost like they've got a weird pattern. You will see it in black rats and and other coloured rats as well but it's less pronounced because their they're hair shafts are the same colour all the way along. Um, and and I, I call that kind of old book coat. Um, but that the lock, loss of um, kind of busk book grease that will go down quite a lot in rex rats they'll start getting bald particularly books are far worse than does for that because the kind of testosterone is involved in the hair production process um, and and it's quite an interesting change as the age kind of physically and it's a lot more pronounced than you will see in does does tend to stay a lot more the same um, whereas books will vary a lot through the life and you can literally um, if i can get clips again. Come here, Mr. He's currently exploring the washing. But seeing two black rats here, you can physically see this this change. You can actually see that kind of stripe forming down um, his back. Though to be fair, he's rusty as hell. Um, and that's nothing to do with him being a buck or a doe, it's just the fact he's rusty as hell. And carries red eye dilute, that does not help matters. But the difference in kind of coat between lovely shiny Kip, who's um young, he's still got the coarse buck coat, and you can um let's see if I can get a magpie. You can actually see a difference between his and magpie's coat. Um, his is actually, it does look coarser. Uh, really hard to get these rats to stay still. Yeah, his does look slightly coarser, it feels slightly coarser, even though he's in excellent condition. And that's because he's a book and his, his coat has changed. Um, when you're new to them, it goes back to basically doe coat. They smell like does, they lose their testosterone and they lose the buck grease. It's, it's quite um, interesting. But yes, you do notice that in older books. So physically, um, there are quite a lot of difference between books and does. Then there's the very, very obvious things, um, which a lot of people, if you go and buy rats from pet shops, seem to miss. So massive physical difference. You'll notice the testicles. Um, as Kip shows off very well, you have, you're nicely well endowed, aren't you, mister? Um, what is also different is all books have a penis, which is something that you can actually pop out. Um, I'll see if I can get a little bit closer for this and still support Kip because it's a very undignified situation and while he's a very good rat. Um, when you kind of push on either side um, and it's not showing up very well so you, oh, I'm sorry, is that offensive? Don't mess with your bits. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Kip's probably been mauled enough at the moment. But effectively, if you watch my penis blood video, um, I do do it. I think poor Eclipse was the one that got embarrassed for that. Ooh, we have a salt here, salt's a little bit bigger. So effectively, push there, push underneath, and the penis will pop out. Um, it's a bit of a kind of faff to get it, and the rats don't particularly enjoy the experience. You need to do it in later life to check for penis plugs, um, which I'll probably mention in the health video a bit more. Um, but there is a whole video on how to do that if you want to be enlightened. Um, but yes, so books and does are very qu qu usually quite straightforward to um, sex. Whereas if you look at this doe here, and I'll probably repeat this on the doe video, <laughs> um, she doesn't have a penis, it's not nearly as big, and there's a hole underneath it, that is her vagina. Books do not have that. Um, you get one or two weird cases where you get rats with um, organs of both sex, hermaphrodites, or pseudo-hermaphrodites that have partially fo formed organs of the other sex. Books generally don't have nipples as well, which you can normally see ruffled in the fur. Um, but again, you can get the odd ones. So you can see there's like little dark patches in the fur, that's her nipples. Um, so physically they're quite different from that point of view. Otherwise, there is not huge, huge differences physically. Um, 
you know, they're still rat shaped fundamentally, they still have noses, <laughs> the sniff, ears, etc. Um, but there is a big size difference. There is obviously a difference in the gen genit genitalia. It's late. I'm not really speaking very well. Um, and there is difference around about the kind of their growth rates and their coat and such as well. So I think that's plenty of time to spend on the kind of physical aspects of book. Um, we'll get on to the behaviour, um, talk about health, diet and habitat as well, and try and cover all those and any questions that have come up on my Facebook page on this topic. If you want to ask, ask any more, get in there for the later ones and I'll try and include them. Um, it's just a post on my Facebook page, you can join in on that one. Um, so that's it from me and the boys that are enjoying themselves. In fact, we shall finish with Sol saying goodbye. I'm looking very sheepish, yes. Um, and um, hopefully we'll continue this video shortly. Bye bye.